This past year brought many challenges. The fund stood in solidarity with organizations across county and state lines to condemn violent, racist, and hateful acts. We also demonstrated our full and continued commitment to the women and girls of Chester County by awarding $227,500 in grants to respond to emerging community needs. Through both word and action, we enabled our grantee partners to continue to make a difference through difficult times. This year also marked our 25th anniversary. 25 years ago, our foremothers gathered as colleagues and friends to talk about the changing world around them and the challenges faced by their daughters, neighbors, and communities. They started their own movement to ask the tough questions and lean into the hard conversations as they work for a brighter future for women and girls. We are only getting started. Our movement continues today and for the next 25 years and beyond. Join us as we revisit some of the partnerships we have strengthened and the impact we have made throughout the past year. The following clips are taken from virtual site visits with grantees. or biggest newer groups, I should say, was um, the Mighty Writers Program, which, you know, we had partnered with them previously. They had run all of their programs out of the garage. So they had been doing their writing workshops with our students um, once a week at the centers. And we know Sarah um, Dickens, who's their director. We've known her for many, many years. Um, she's the president of another organization called Casa Guanajuato. And, you know, same thing pretty early on we were talking for what what could we do and uh she reached out we had been starting our, our supply distribution here at the kennick garage and she reached out and said you know would how how would you feel if we started doing something similar out of the west grove garage and we could partner together so that both of these communities could have a space that's within walking distance for many families who don't have transportation to get lunches from school to get food distribution to get supplies um and we said yes obviously like we would love you know this to reach more folks and so we became like really close partners through this process and i know they have continued to do distribution i know they're not really back to kind of the after school and, and you know writing programs yet but we anticipate you know when they return to that type of programming for for students that they'll you know come back and be working out of our centers with our students hopefully soon <laughs> you know hopefully mm -hmm. this summer or in the next school year whenever they kind of transition back but um we really grew very close with that organization even more than we had been and and served double the amount of people that we would have been mm -hmm. able to to serve with um, supply distribution and food distribution. We had two moms last year that got their nursing degree. And that's a really big deal to get your nursing degree. They're single moms. Mm -hmm. but they came to us in two different ways. One mom we've known for several years, and she, um, you know, sometimes got a snag you with trying to balance school and her work and the kids needs and things like that. Uh, she had an old computer that finally failed on her. We got her a computer. One time she couldn't afford to pay for her books. Another time the child was in crisis and we helped talk through, you know, maybe dropping out of classes this semester and going back next semester because of family needs. And so we spent several years supporting her where she was because she didn't had the best support network, but she was determined she was going to get her nursing degree to have a better life for, for herself and her children. And when she graduated this summer, she's in her graduation robes, looking very, very proud. <laughs> and her three kids are standing there with t-shirts on that say, mom did this for me. And you know, you're just completely taken in in the moment. And we know how hard she worked and mm -hmm. um, the kinds of things we did financially for her or found an angel to help her out or to talk her through, just to be an advocate and support for her. Yesterday, one of our staff said that we try to be a judgment-free zone. 
um, somebody comes and says that they're in need of help and it's not pertinent whether their race or their abilities or their ethnicity or um, their economic status, they've come to us in crisis. They are trusting us with the scariest time in their lives. And what is it that we can go and do? Uh, so we felt that having DEI um, in our culture has, has been a long-term part of our organization. It's part of what we do. It's part of what we always do, help the most vulnerable in the community to address unmet needs. And by listening at the street level um, to hear what those needs are is really important. And then to go in and help other people understand. We remained open 24 hours, seven days a week throughout the pandemic, not having any direction in the beginning, not having masks. And, and I just want to mention that one of our board members made masks for us and, and children because you couldn't even purchase them. Um, so yeah, um, again, re remaining and being available. It's not like the, the funding gets invested in just one individual. Um, it's, you know, a collaboration um, and the dollars that come from the fund are certainly a influential part of that. Um, when I think about um, the safety of individuals, um, having an individual from a fleeing situation coming into our shelter of uh, maybe transitioning to our bridge program. And I am thinking of a very specific case here um, and have seeing the growth just to get them to, to the bridge program to uh, speak up um, and to advocate for themselves when they, they did not have a voice. Um, they were very withdrawn, very to themselves and they didn't feel like they had a voice, but they ended up getting into the bridge program um, and then proceeded to move on to independent housing. Um, and to see that transformation and to, um, fortunately, I still get updates on this, uh, on this participant because she still does engage with us, but a completely different person. And they talk about, and this is a common thing I hear, that they don't know who they become. They're, they said that, you know, they'll talk about looking in the mirror and not knowing who that person was looking back at them. And when they, if they can get to a place where they see themselves, their true authentic self again, um, it is, I have, I, have, I have goosebumps right now because it is absolutely amazing. started as a result of the fund and the issues that were brought up through the blueprint report. We decided to focus on health, education, and um, economics. <clears throat> and this particular year, we are actually at the point now where we can really expand on what that means to be able to address the needs of the community. So for our um, health, we are focusing on racial trauma its impact on it to increase the knowledge of racial trauma in the community as well as its impact and resources to be able to move towards resiliency and healing. So our coalition has been able to evolve from that particular goal um, in coordination with uh, Chester County ACES Coalition, but we are coming together to be able to um, focus on these issues and work together. And the seed forming is actually helping us with some of the educational workshops that will be offered to the community, both professionals and the general community. A student-led nonprofit that registers and empowers high school students to vote. Um, and one, our core, we were founded in Chester County and a lot of our efforts are based in Chester County. And that was where 
the impact uh, grant went, which was so, so exciting. We were able to get into almost every single public high school in the Chester, in Chester County and many of the private schools as well with the help of the grant because of a summit that we put on uh, for, the, for Pennsylvania. So we have had about six, seven statewide summits, but Pennsylvania obviously was near and dear to my heart and also was, I think, one of the most successful due to the incredible kindness and generosity of you guys and the impact grant. And individual stories, like there's so many student leaders who we talk to and, you know, being able to send them like a voter registration in a box, like even something as easy as like giving them stamps to send in like mail-in ballots, um, which we're able to fund through through the impact fund is just really makes a world of difference when it comes to financial accessibility with voting, because unfortunately voting is not free sometimes uh, as it should be. And, you know, you have to pay for the stamp or you have to pay to pin print out your voter registration form because a lot of students don't have their driver's licenses yet and they can't register online if they don't have a driver's license. So even giving someone like a box and in it, it has like the stamps they need, like stickers, shirts. And, and with the impact fund, we're able to give students that sense of community which is so integral to any sort of community building um, exercise or project. Came up with a plan to convert um, one of our longtime rooms here at the center we've been in since 2006, so about 15 years, um, convert one of our rooms here into a permanent food pantry, um, which will be accessible not only for the 700 people, 750 people who have been using us all during this last year and a half, but obviously our entire senior membership and the local community once they come back. So to convert that room, um, sounds like a simple thing, but it really wasn't. We're having to do things like we have an old carpeted floor in there. It needs to be replaced with vinyl. We needed refrigeration. We needed a freezer. Um, we've broken, me two of them, more carts than I can count in the last year trying to tote around heavy food on light duty carts. So we have um, 10 very large scale um, steel parts being fabricated just for us. Um, we're having sliding glass doors put in so that um, not only the food bank and our other local partners who help us out will be able to get food on giant pallets, especially in more easily, but also so it'll be ADA accessible and immediately accessible from our side door and our curb. So the seniors will be able to get in, in and out easily. So long story short, um, the room when we open it, which will hopefully be September, will have refrigerated food, frozen food, dry goods, and all kinds of things that they'll be able, certainly on a weekly basis to get started, but our hope is to eventually get to at least two, three days a week um, on a regular basis from here forward, where the seniors are able to come in and shop on their own, use it as a choice pantry so they can get what they choose to have, but also for the people who either aren't comfortable coming in or aren't able to come in or just have a mobility barrier, we'll still be able to basically help them shop right in that area with them literally parked right at the curb. And for those of our, our seniors who are on Rover or another form of transportation, we'll be able to package up their things just as they're leaving so they don't have to sit and, and wait for them. So um, your organization coming forth with the impact grant that you did is one of about five entities that I would say if we didn't have we literally wouldn't be doing this project yet. And instead, uh, we're in a place where I just came down the hall uh, from where the guys were painting the room today. And hopefully in about three to four weeks, it'll be a finished project that we're able to open our new doors on. Um, so your grant has clearly um, made a giant difference for us. We've always been right around the 65, 70% of who we serve are, are women. But I'm gonna say, especially during COVID, We've definitely hit 75% and at times I believe we've been higher than that. And the other thing that I think is, is, is real key is, um, I don't know exactly how to say this, but you know, traditionally um, women are known to be just caregivers in, in every sense of the word. So a lot of, particularly the women who are coming to our line are not just coming to get food for themselves, but coming to pick up for neighbors, relatives, yeah. a sister. We have older mothers who come to get for a senior daughter and vice versa. And we have a few people who come from different senior living communities that sure, they may be taking a few things for themselves, but more importantly, they're taking it back to three or four or six um, yeah. other families. That's also given them the ability, particularly when COVID was at its height, it's given them all the ability to kind of rotate um, how, you know, they were able to come once a month, 
but rotate with three others that were kind of in their circle um, and be able to share things. So just all the way around, um, it's been a great thing to watch them as a group really be able to empower themselves, not only to help themselves with the help of the senior center, but to be able to go back and help others um, just by coming here to pick up food um, once a week that they're able to access at no cost. The fund is honored and inspired to work with organizations across Chester County that are fueling change for women and girls in our communities.